Hi all, I am Guru. I am back to you people. Guys, uh, today uh, I came with a lot of interest to discuss with you people on the root cause analysis. I mean to say, in QA part, in QA testing life cycle, how we are going to do the root cause analysis, which is important discussion, which I am discussing with you people, guys. Well, let us start. What exactly this root cause analysis? Why we need this? What what purpose the industries people are using this root cause analysis? Okay, L let me let me go ahead and brief you step by step, step by step, how actually this root cause analysis works. We call it as RCA. Okay, so for example, I am working in Agile, being a being a tester. I am working in Agile testing. Okay, my user story is completed. Test case execution is over. And we are we are putting our uh, live application demo in front of a stakeholder and a product owner. Imagine that we are giving a demo. Okay. So after demo session, customer will give us a feedback. Stakeholder or a customer or a client, they will give us a feedback in three category. What is went good? Means what are the things really we have done the good job? They will appreciate. Yes, this is how the thing, this is how the things. What is went wrong? Hey, guys, you would have done like this. You would have done like that. So if any developer misunderstood the functionality, right, they may do the miscoding. Coding may, coding may be wrong because functionally itself, they have misunderstood it. So because of misunderstanding the functionality, they will do the coding in that level. And testing will also have the, have the same impact. So after giving a demo to the customer, they will tell, okay, these are the wrongs. Can you improve? And they will give another feedback like, is there any improvement area? Means they will give what is went good. They will give you feedback what is went wrong. And they will give you the improvement area also so that you should not do the same mistake for the sprint one release. And for the sprint one, you should not repeat the same mistake for the sprint two release. Two release. That is the reason they wanted to give you the feedback. We call it as sprint retrospective meeting it is. Guys, listen carefully. We call it as sprint retrospective meeting. Now, being a tester, we have released a product to the production. Imagine that. And I have got a couple of defects, especially in my module. Imagine that I was handling one module and the testing is completed. Everything is over. And we have released that product to the production, especially end user found a couple of defects in my module. Okay, what is the next process? So immediately what they will do, they will post back to our manager. Oh, guys, uh, you people have you people have missed out. These many defect leakage has been happened. They will send you the uh, list of the defect or they will raise the tickets or some process. They will, they will communicate with you about these many defect they found. Okay. So what being, and imagine that manager has called me up for a meeting. Hey, Guru, can you come? We'll have a discussion because we got a lot of production issues on your module. What kind of testing you have done? Can you tell me? I'm the answerable person because I have taken whole and ownership of whole and soul of that particular module. I'm the answerable person. I, we will have a one-to-one -one discussion. What I will do in that situation? So will suddenly I will not come to the conclusion, oh, these are the defects as we know. First, I will I will ask him, can you give me the defect which they found in the production? I will list out the defect. Then, anyhow, I have maintained the traceability matrix from requirement to the defect level, status level. First, I will go through the defects. Okay, what kind of defect these all are? And what is the severity level of that defect and priority level of that defect? Okay, let me understand that first. Okay, I understood. Next step, what I need to do? I wanted to do the root cause analysis of one one defect. Means, anyhow, I have a traceability matrix in front of me. Requirement to scenario, scenario to test case design, test case design to test case execution, test case execution to defect ID, defect ID to defect status. I call it as a forward traceability matrix. Okay. I would like to see, is there any such defect parallelly I have raised in the tool by referring the traceability matrix? I am coming from the backward traceability matrix. I am going, going to trace. I am going from forward 
Now to do the root cause analysis, I am coming from the backward traceability matrix. I will catch hold of one defect. Okay. Have I raised such a defect in the tool? First, let me check. Okay. I have raised. If I have raised, what is the status of the defect? Is it closed? Is it reopened? Or is it a known defect? Guys, end user, they don't know what exactly. They found a defect. They are, they are straight forward. They are sending it to us. Okay. So root cause analysis, I will do. I will check out the defect. Okay. If defect is in closed status, as I retested and I made it as closed, but why defect has been arised in the production? Is there any environment fluctuations? Because the which environment I am working is the are they using the same environment? Okay, that is one that is one the considerable point. Okay. If this defect is not closed, still it is in open status. Means I might have reopened this defect and developer might have not fixed. This is another another possibility. If developer has been not fixed, he might have written some comments on that particular defect. This, this might be a known defect where customer don't know. Okay. And, and if the defect is, is closed, still it is existing in, in, uh, in the uh, production environment, then there might be an environment fluctuations or then there might be a mm, uh, network issue. Something might happen and it will get resolved. So we will write the comments. What kind of root cause analysis I have done. If the production people have posted the defect which is not there in the defect, in the test cases, in the requirement, in the specification, nothing it is there. Then what is went wrong over there? I mean to say, we call it as communication gap. Means requirement has been changed by the customer where the business analyst has been not communicated with the QA team. That might be the reason. Okay. Especially this traceability matrix, backward traceability matrix will help me to trace or to do the root cause analysis. Why, when, what? Then I will straight forward, I will write down the comments. What is the comment? Then I will send out an email to my lead or my manager. Okay, these are the root causes which I have found for those particular defects which they have posted on my module. Guys, I call it as RCA. And certain times comes up, it is your mistake. Means, yes, defect is there. They have raised it. And a defect, actually it is a defect is there and they have posted it. It is wrong from my end. What is the reason behind that to do the wrong? Is my team members have been not executed properly? Guys, one one test cases you need you need to execute so carefully, so carefully. You need to take all the evidences of that particular build. Sometimes what happens? They will post the defect. So many defect used to come, but QA environment URL itself is wrong, which we were executed the test cases by mistake. Our manager has been communicated the URL, which is a wrong, which is a old version of URL. We have executed new test cases on old version of URL and we are re releasing a new URL. Definitely, right? You will get a hell lot of defects. So such a kind of mistakes we wanted to analyze in the root cause analysis case. Guys, it is one of the best sessions, one of the best QA work I'm going to work. Join with me. You will learn plenty, lot, lot in QA. Join with me. I will help you out. See, learning never ends. Join. Every point, every point of real kind of work experience you will face. You will feel, yes, okay, what to do? Oh, what to do? You, you, will, you will vibrate your mind in all angle. Okay, this action comes up. What next? Okay, this is the coming up. What next? You will understand everything. Everything. And day by day, day by day, guys, your confidence level will get increased very high. You will become a one of the best tester. You can handle the project testing independently. Intention is, once you are testing, defect leak out should not happen in the production. That is how, guys. Good session. Call me or text me or ping me. We work together. Together as a team. Learn, learn the things. 
placement all and all you will get guys unless and until you are not confident on the on the on the project matter on the situation matter you should not accept one job trust me you should not accept one job because in the in the interview they will ask you the real problems what they have faced definitely right definitely they are going to ask you and they wanted to see how best you are going to come out from that situation guys trust me guys it is a good opportunity join with me definitely i am going to help you out and i am very much thankful to you people you you have listened my video and you have watched my video and uh, i am very thankful for that thank you thanks a lot guru see you again in my next session and sessions were linking one by one one by one one by one. go through it and better you work with me that is that is most important most uh, welcome i am doing with you people thank you thanks a lot guru see you again guys